Namaste everyone and welcome. So I'm here in uh, Canada for a Tony Robbins event and I just want to spend a few minutes with you uh, just sharing some insights. So before we start, let's ask for a blessing, shall we? To the Divine Supreme One, Divine Father, Mother, to all the spiritual elders, holy masters, to all the saints of all traditions, archangels, holy angels, and spiritual helpers. Personally, to my teacher, Master Tsakhok Sri Mahaguji Meiling, we humbly ask for divine light, love, guidance, help, wisdom, and protection. We thank you in full faith, and so it is. All right, so I'll just make it short. You know, we posted a video, not a video, uh, an announcement for the upcoming uh, Year of the Dragon lecture and meditation, the New Year's Day, you know, Chinese New Year. And it's interesting that uh, after I posted it, uh, someone asked me, he says, well, you know, they were told that the Year of the Dragon is not good for them. Of course, you have like a ton of people says it's good for them. I just want to address that very quickly because uh, there's always people who think about, well, you know, the astrology says something. And then from there, they decide, well, because the astrology says life's going to be good for that year, everything went well. And then they say, oh, the astrology says things aren't going to be good. And so that's why they have all those problems. So that said, I was meditating on it. And this is the Chinese proverb that uh, just, I guess, came. The winds of destiny may blow, but the direction of your sails is up to you. Let's do this again. The winds of destiny may blow, but the direction of your sails is up to you. Unfortunately, a lot of people who are on the spiritual path, and I'll say it like it is, have a tendency to be superstitious because they're so sensitive, which I'll talk about, <laughs> again, a lot of people who claim to be sensitive, it's not really sensitive. They're just, um, let's just say, easily triggered. <laughs> There's a difference. However, let's, that's one another topic. You see, since they're sensitive, they sense stuff, they, their mind also has a tendency to interpret things the way they want to interpret it. Okay? So listen carefully. As you already know me long enough, I shoot straight. What happens is something like this. It could be the year of the alligator. <laughs> it could be the year of, I don't know, a frog. Who the heck cares? There's a certain tendency. It's just like, you know, uh, the tendency of somebody who's born in the sign of Libra have a tendency to be balancing. Ten somebody who's a year of the ram has a tendency to be more aggressive. Uh, people born in the year of the dragon have a tendency to be more courageous. The tendency might be there. It's just like that is kind of the course of where things kind of statistically go for that particular astrological sign. However, you, the soul, the spiritual self, still get to decide how you move forward or stop or move backwards. That's why when I read that um, message from that person, I go, that's superstition. See, if a particular year is bad for a particular astrological sign, you have to first define what is bad, what is good. Make sense? Plus, you have to take into account many, many, other, many other factors. Number one, do they practice intelligent hard work? Or do they say, well, you know, that's what the heaven says, that's what the science says, so they just sit on their ass and let for, for, for things to happen. That's one. Number two, do they have any level of discipline? You can have a person who is whatever, astrologically and karmically, not karmically, uh, spiritually, whatever, is against them, but they say, I'm going to do it anyway. And by sheer will, they can be successful. And you can have somebody who's like, everything's for them. They're the right astrological sign. They have all the resources and everything. They, go, they just sit there and go, it's for me anyway. It will just happen by itself. They end up with zero. Make sense? So I just want to keep that in mind. These things are great. They're wonderful. That's why... Uh, in that talk for the Year of the Dragon, I go, I'll go through it in detail about what it means, what is the significance of the dragon compared to a serpent, Kundalini. I go into the details of what it is so you understand it, so there's no room for superstition. Now, let's take it one step further. 
Another factor to consider is karma. You can have someone who was born, they brought a lot of good karma from a previous lifetime. So they're destined to be successful or be happy. But by the choice of the incarnated soul, the lower soul, they screw it all up. Sounds familiar? You know people like that, right? Everything's given to them, but they don't do anything. They waste their life. And you have people who everything's stacked against them. They came in, not much good karma. They were born in a, you know, a poor family. Didn't have much uh, chance to be educated. None, none of the good stuff the other guy has. But they said, I will storm the gates of heaven. I will be successful. I'll make this work because I know this is my destiny. So they do it. Make sense? So that's why I love it. The, the, dest the winds of destiny may blow. Like it's going in this certain direction. Hey, but I get to decide which way my sail will capture that wind. Go this way or this way. So don't be superstitious. I know some of you are like, yeah, but I go to a clairvoyant psychic. They tell me this time and that. I also go to them. You know, I, I have them as consultants. So I hear what they have to say. I go, uh-huh, yes, okay, thank you. Uh-huh, yes, thank you. So at least I know what is happening in the energy world, assuming they're good. From there, the stuff I don't like, I find ways to mitigate it. The ones they say this is going to be good, I pour kerosene on it, make it even better. These do not decide my life. I, the soul, decide my life. Keep that in mind. You, the soul, the spirit yourself, create the thought forms, the emotional forms, the actions, which will determine if you take off like a rocket or you sit and do nothing. That's that. It's very simple. So when somebody says, you know, I see in your future, you go, namaste, namaste, go away. That's it. You see, I see, you know how many times people have told me, you know, in a class or an event, they go, I see your aura with this and that. I see this angel. I see this brilliant light. I go, thank you. After they leave, the information leaves with them. You know why? That's nice. That's good. But I don't let those affect or influence what I want to do in life. I've been given a task by my teacher Promote the teachings, spread the teachings, alleviate the suffering of people, do my best to help in enlightening people's souls. That's my job. That's that. Finished. Everything else is decoration. Now, hear me out. I'm not discounting completely all these other, like astrology and everything else. I never said that. Here's the most important way to look at it. Okay? Just like we teach in all the classes. People say, yeah, feng shui is very important. You know feng shui, how you arrange your house, your car, your desk, and everything, right? So I remember many years ago, I was teaching a pranic healing class. And this feng shui master, really nice guy, came up to me and said, if your feng shui is right, if your feng shui is right, your life will be perfect. Okay? He said, if your feng shui is right, your life will be perfect. I said, wow, okay. Then at the end of the class, I, I, after having further interaction with him, I mean, I didn't say anything. I went to my teacher. I said, Master, this is strange. Huh? The feng shui master said, if your feng shui is right, your life will be perfect. But, I, but the guy's broke. How could that be? And the master Cho said, you know, yeah, yeah, many years ago, there's this, uh, there's this guy. He said, if you can visualize it, you can have everything. And I look at him. He looks pretty bad. The guy doesn't have money. He's broke. Something does not compute. <laughs> That's what Master Cho said. You see, it's something like this. They are not aware there are multi-causal factors. Feng Shui is just one of the factors. Intelligent hard work is one of the factors. Karma is one of the factors. It's not just one thing. They're multi-causal factors. Plus, watch this. You decide which one you're going to put your energy into. So if you decide, well, this clairvoyant said, or this uh, astrological chart says, this is what's going to be happening in my life, you have two choices. 
Choice one, you say, okay, I'll let it happen. Or choice two, you say, nope, I don't want it. I'm going to go somewhere else. Now, listen carefully. How to utilize these are, these are the things like feng shui, clairvoyance, uh, what do you call it, astrology. Here's how you do it. If you have a plane, you know, airplane, going from point A to point B. If you have a headwind, you can still get to the destination, but takes more fuel, takes more time, right? If you have a headwind, I mean, you have a tailwind, sorry. If you have a tailwind, it actually pushes the plane faster. So you get to your destination faster and you use less fuel. So the secret in using these other teachings or information is to think, hmm, okay, today, this year is the year of the dragon. It's supposed to be good for me. So what should I do? Ah, I already have that tailwind. If that's the case, I'm going to harness that tailwind and have more projects so I get to get my projects done faster. And I can tap into that energy, whatever, to make it faster. Yeah? Well, what if it's the opposite? Well, now astrology says the area of the dragon is bad. Okay, first of all, that's their thought form. <laughs> I don't accept it. Number two, just in case they might be partially right, I will just pay extra attention and being careful with the details, plan my work well, and maintain discipline and get the job, job done, regardless of what they say. So if there is a real headwind, it doesn't matter. You find another route around the headwind, if you can, like that's what planes do, right? If they notice there's a big headwind, there's a big pocket of disturbance, what do they, they take a different route. They go to higher elevation or whatever, or lower elevation. That's choice one. Choice two, uh, the pilot says, okay, we're going to go through some turbulence. Uh, all the flight attendants, please take your seats. Buckle up. This will only be a few minutes. We'll get through it. <laughs> you get through it. They don't say, well, you know, there's a headwind. There's some disturbance. Let's go home. Who does that? No one. So you, the soul, are in control. That's it. That's the lesson today. So I'll read it to you again. The winds of destiny may blow, whatever direction. This way, this way, this way. Who the hell cares? Be smart about it. You go, hmm. But the direction of the sail is up to me. What is my destination? If the wind is against me, let me find another time to do it. Right? Everything's subject to change. Let me find, I change my approach. And if I can't do either one of those, I just buckle up, make sure my boat, my ship is well equipped with good captain. You're the captain, right? Make sure my crew is behind me, all hands on deck, go through it. You want to be successful? That's how it's done. Don't leave your, your destiny in the hands of some whatever. Anyway, I don't want to say anything negative, so I just leave it at that. It's in your case. It's in your hands. Now, why do people like, uh, what do you call this, going to, putting a lot of emphasis on these other things like feng shui, astrology, biorhythm, whatever, some of this stuff. You know why? Because if they're not successful, they have somewhere else to blame. But if it's up to me, if it doesn't work, it's my fault. Make sense? They can't handle that. But in reality, if it doesn't work, you go, okay, at least I know what not to do next time. By us taking responsibility, we get the lesson. If you don't take the responsibility, it's the cause of something else. We never learn the lesson. As the issue comes up again, guess what? You have another brick wall in front of you. That's it. Lesson is very simple. You control your destiny. Period. However, by learning the inner teachings, it gives you the inside scoop on how to harness them. If it's good, you go, come on, pile it on. If it's not so good, uh, let me see of getting around it, uh, on top of it, below it, maybe different timing, or maybe I should load up and just blast through it. That's it. Simple. Let's meditate. Put your hand like this. 
I am that I am. I'm not the body. I'm not the emotion or the thoughts. I am the soul. I am a spiritual being of divine intelligence, divine love, and divine willpower. I am that, the soul, the spiritual self. I am connected in one to my higher soul. I am connected in one to the divine spirit in me. I am a child of God. I am one with God. I am one with all. There is only oneness. Just be still. Open your hands in blessing. Be aware of your heart, your hands. Imagine the earth in front of you. We'll do the meditation twin hearts as taught to us by my teacher, Grand Master Tuahok Sui. So be aware of your heart and your hands. Fill the earth with beautiful pink light. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Wherever there is hatred anywhere in the world, let me sow unconditional love. Where there is injury, let me sow pardon and forgiveness. Where there is doubt, let me sow faith. Where there is despair, let me sow hope. Just be aware of your heart and your hands. Fill the earth with peace, with love the spirit of forgiveness with hope and with faith, especially for the ones we know going through difficult times. May they be blessed with hope and with faith and a better life. So be it. Where there is darkness, let me sow light. And where there is sadness, let me sow joy. Just be with your heart in your hands. Allow yourself to be a channel of peace, love, forgiveness, a channel of hope and faith to those who are in pain. A channel of brilliant light and joy. So be it. So be it. Now be aware of your heart. Inhale. Be aware of your crown. Exhale. Fill the earth with beautiful golden light. Our hearts are one, our souls are one. From the heart of God, through my soul, through my entire being, may every person, every being on earth be blessed with love and with kindness. May all be blessed with great joy and happiness, with understanding, harmony, and divine peace. May all be blessed without exception. So be it. So be it. Now be aware of your heart, your crown, take a deep breath, fill the earth with intense golden light. Our hearts are one, our souls are one, our spirits are one. There's only oneness. From the center of the heart of God, through my spirit, through my soul, through my entire being, may every person, every being on earth, in the higher worlds, middle worlds, even the lower worlds, may all beings, all of them, in every dimension, every direction, be blessed with God's unconditional love and kindness. May all be blessed with inner peace and inner healing. May all be healed of any pain, sorrow, or suffering in any form. So be it. May all be blessed. So be it. From the center of the heart of God, may all be blessed with peace, with love, and with kindness. So be it. So be it. May all be blessed. Now gently lower your hands. Keep your eyes closed, keep your tongue on the roof of your mouth. Imagine a brilliant flame, brilliant golden flame just floating above your head. Send a stream of love from your heart up, up to the golden flame. Stay there. Again, another stream of love from your heart up to your throat. To the center of your head, out of your head, into that golden flame. <sighs> Stay there. We are one. 
still, be aware of the inner stillness, be aware of the inner peace, just allow your awareness to drift into that light, into that nothingness, and just simply let go. That whatever happens, happens now. Gently, slowly, very gently and slowly come back to your body. Gently move your fingers, move your toes, and just very gently and slowly come back. Raise your hands in blessing again. Picture the earth in front of you and all the people you love. Fill them with golden light. May all of them be blessed with good health, with much happiness with abundance and prosperity and with spirituality, so be it. May all be blessed. Bless your job, your career, with success, with progress and advancement, so be it. Lots of prosperity. So be it, so be it, and so it is. To the Divine Supreme One, Divine Father, Mother, thank you. To all the spiritual elders, holy masters, to all the saints of all traditions, traditions, archangels, holy angels, spiritual helpers, thank you for your immense blessings. In full faith, so it is. All right. You may slowly open your eyes. I hope you had a good meditation. Uh, we add extra juice on the silence and the stillness. We you know, housekeeping is noisy on the other side. We have to kind of give you extra energy so you can go deeper. Anyway, thank you very much for joining me. Uh, again, I'm here on a Tony Robbins event. I'll do my best to squeeze it in. I know today is not the scheduled time, but I, I'll do whatever I can. Okay. Um, again, just quick announcement. Uh, next Saturday is Chinese New Year, and we're having the Year of the Dragon uh, lecture and meditation. Okay, now don't be expecting that, you know, he'll tell you about your fortune of being a dragon and this and that. All that is great and wonderful. It's interesting information, but the inner teachings is what we focus on. And there's a meditation. You also write down the things you want bless, just like we usually do in the full moon. And we'll harness the energy of the new year and just energize and charge it also. And coming up on, uh, in a few weeks 
is our four day challenge just like we did uh, l last year it is we call it the live your best energy challenge it's four nights where we go through how to use energy to be to bless you with hap uh, health wealth and happiness so we're going to focus on health techniques on how to improve your health techniques on how to be more prosperous and of course the most important one when you integrate everything how to be happy so stay tuned to that namaste you all take good care and i'll see you soon god bless bye